Welcome to the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Keenan Lake is the author of the book, My Daddy Taught Me That, published by Welcome, a social worker and activist. You can like this show's fan page at www.facebook.com slash the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Feel free to post any comments, questions, or requests for his book on the fan page. Now let's go into the studio with your host, Mr. Keenan Lake, and co-host, Marcus Select. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Keenan Lake Show right here live and on demand. And we are so proud that you stopped by to hear, to listen, to share, and we appreciate you so very much. Keenan, how are you doing today? Coach, I am doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. It's a beautiful day here in Nashville, North Carolina. The sun is shining. It's actually really warm today, so it was a really good day today. How about yourself? Doing real well. The Falcons are not doing well, but I stopped watching. (laughs) (laughs) That's a a whole other topic, Coach. But listen, Coach, I want to jump right into our show today because I think we have a a pretty good show lined up. Before we get started, I want to say two things. First of all, I would like to thank all and give a shout-out to all of our veterans. I know tomorrow's Veterans Day, so I'd like to give a shout-out to all of our veterans who put in work for this country who made it possible for us to have our freedom so i want to say thank you um also i would like to introduce we have a guest today coach and this is actually the first time that our guest has been on the show her name is vita redding and i'm not going to take her glory and introduce her because she does so many things and actually i did not even know that she was a minister i knew a lot of things about her but i had no idea that she was a minister but i'm going to introduce vita redding and have her introduce herself to the show okay Hello, everybody. Um, he already said my name, Vita. Um, essentially, there's so many things. I don't know, maybe a little bit of science or jack of all trades, master none, but um, I am a minister, uh, ordained minister. Um, I would say not a denominational, but the Christian faith. I follow the Lord um, Jesus. And um, degree a few times over. Um, went to Brown University in Case Western and um, National and Theological Seminary. And um, right now, like like I told them, a jobby job is um, a recruit, um, essentially an executive recruiter for um, Fortune 500 companies. These are VPs and engineers and anybody out there that needs a job, let me know. If you're going to go to Rosemary. Um, And I do a little bit of freelance graphic design um, and, you know, kind of like what I share with them. Mostly it's pro bono um, type of work where I help ministries and uh, people that are kind of getting started with their their companies and whatnot just to kind of get them launched. And um, that's pretty much it. Auntie, you know, family person, you know, those, those are really the big things. I probably could have said those up front. So, so thank you for having me on the show, though. Welcome aboard. Well, no, thank you. Thank you. Exactly. Well, Coach, listen, let's jump right into the topic today, folks. And listen, one of the, the actually the topic that we're going to be discussing today is are African American men, black men, lazy and afraid to work? And is this a myth or fact? So, Coach, you know, I have my beliefs, and Vita, you as well. I have my beliefs. I have some things that I, you know, kind of hold to be true to me. Mm-hmm. But before I weigh in on these thoughts, Coach, and, and actually, let's just, let's just let you do this. Since we have a guest, Coach, I'm going to let you go first because I don't want her to be kind of put on the spot. But what do you think about this topic, Coach, and what do you think about that? Uh, well, you know, I have varying thoughts about that topic. I want to say, typically, if you take away all the variety of scenarios, the inequality, the lack of company, uh, even listing and uh, advertising, let alone letting certain positions be available to minority communities, uh, if you take away all of the ills, in other words, I would think that the topic, are black males lazy, is a myth. But we are certainly, most certainly in danger of creating or we have already created, perhaps, uh, through the education of the Keenan Lake Show and beyond, a culture that does not have to be lazy to work because we have provided so many benefits more for, in some cases, low income 
than middle class. So there are very little incentives, if I could say, for those to get out, work hard, uh, if you couple the ills with the benefits that seem to confuse up and coming African American male um, uh, men, and if you if you if you add the incarceration conversation in in there, you, you just come out with a matrix of of problems. But on the on the whole, uh, I think that it is a myth that black men do not want to work. I think that black men work harder and have to work harder than any other man on earth. And that being said, I'll, I'll relinquish the floor. I feel like I'm a senator or something talking to the legislation of Congress. <laughs> I mean, real, right. you know. All right. Vita, you, you can go ahead and weigh in on that. Yeah. I, um, you know, when, when you gave me the topic, you know, I kind of, I laughed when I saw it. And, you know, partially because, you know, to me, there's a lot of questions. You know, there's, there's um, I've, I've seen both. I got to say for myself, I didn't grow up. Um, you know, I didn't grow up in a rich family or anything like that, but my father worked, you know, all the time. He worked, like, two jobs. And, um, you know, he wasn't lazy at all, like I would say, in, in terms of modeling, you know, just hard work and ethic and things like that. You know, my family, um, you know, that definitely in a good family, you know, to see that as a work ethic. But I, I've seen, um, on the other side, you know, family members who have dated men that don't work, um, you know, experiencing, you know, at some point, not that a not that a person I was dating didn't work, but that they didn't have ambition to do anything beyond um, just collecting a check. You know, like there's there's uh, visions and dreams and you know things that are um, in everybody's heart. You know, many are women, but um, for for black men, there's there's not been a lot of dreaming. I think um, you know beyond like the stereotypical sort of you know what do you want to be when you grow up and you know you ask a kid that and you know it's a rapper, it's an athlete. Um, you know, you don't hear things off the wall like an engineer or, um, you know, something that's just different and unique, you know, and um, I agree with Coach, you know, it is a myth, um, a stereotype, but like with a stereotype, there are also um, situations where it's true, <laughs> you know, it's actually a fact that there, and, and I would say of all races, because I've seen it white, black, Hispanic, you know, I'm sure Asian culture, I, I don't know, you know, but it's like there, there's more than one um you know, thing that defies the stereotype, but there's also more than one thing that actually validates the stereotype. And so um, part of that is cultural, I think. Uh, part of that is, you know, poverty mindset, you know, which, you know, just to explain what that means real briefly is that um, it's something that becomes ingrained into your, your thinking, you know, that you um, are the struggle and this is how life is supposed to be. And, um, you know, I saw my dad do this and my grandfather did that, you know, so I'm supposed to do this, you know, and, and that's all just a part of um, a cultural mindset. And um, it, 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 it could date back, you know, hundreds of years, you know, but um, I do think it's a myth. And um, I think that there's some stereotypes that, you know, do have some facts behind them, but um, overall, I would say it's a myth. Okay. Well, listen, I'm glad that you both waited on that. So let me give my, my uh, thought on this whole topic and this matter. Coach and Vita both, <clears throat> excuse me, I actually am torn because if you had asked me this question maybe a month, two months ago, I would have said a mess. You know, I would have flat out said mess and, and, and gave my thoughts just as you both did. But this is what I've been dealing with over the last month or so myself. Now, let me backtrack. We all know the struggles, and you, you both actually laid a, a couple of topics out really good as far as what we go through, particularly as African Americans. There are not a lot of jobs available. Um, you know, society and the system has allowed, you know, um, certain things primarily when it comes to men not to be in the favor of men, not to be able to get certain jobs, to be able to take jobs or have taken jobs away. So we all know the system and how the struggles continue to go with that. Um, we all know that um, certain areas of the country don't promote. Like, for example, if you look at, you know, maybe even the, the – um, the Detroit, Michigan area, where jobs in the whole have been taken away from uh, the African American community as a whole, that that whole that whole place is just really uh, like downtrodden with, with with no jobs, you know. So we look at areas like that. We look at you know how the system is cre is created, how the system is set up, you know, a lot of things that we've been talking about on the show. But one thing that I want to bring out, and I, and the reason that I wanted to have the show, I think Vita made a very good point. 
she talked about her father working and actually even working two jobs. You know, what I am starting to see more and more is this, and, and, and to even bring in my dad and give him a lot of credit. My dad, Mr. Benny Lake, you know, Mr. Ashwell, everything, everybody knew Pops, everybody, you know, knew what kind of man he was, the, the ex globe charter. Well, you know, as a man with pride and a man, you know, he's always worked the job. In fact, like, like Vito, like, just like your father, he had two jobs at one point in time. But I even remember my dad when, when times got really bad and the funds got low. I remember him doing things that, that you know, would even people would even question. Like, I'm not getting out doing that. I'm not going to sacrifice my reputation or even do it. And some, certain things he did, like I remember he'll get out and have a bunch of people just bring cars down and he'll wash cars and make extra money and, you know, to do things like that. And, and it's like, we don't have that with these young men today. And I think, I think the question is, not so much as far as black men being afraid to work, because I think if you put a black man in a position to work, they would not have a problem with working, primarily the older black men, the men who, and what I mean by older black men, the older black men are who were 25 to 30 plus. But when you get with this new generation, these younger, these younger kids, these younger crowds, I do start to sense a form of them being lazy and not wanting to, or even willing to work, and not even, you know, all it is is, Give me a package. Let me get out here on the block and, and let me do what I do to make some fast, quick money. I'm going to turn it over to you, Coach. Well, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's hard to defend the obvious uh, because, uh, but the question again was black men in general, I think. I was looking at it from a general sense, but, you know, we are, I think we're all three of us are torn. Uh, with that answer, but we have to understand that there is a convoluted uh, master plan here in the cultural uh, halls of uh, of picture painting, and we are always at war with the image issue with minorities. Uh, we have been at war with that from the inception of being brought to America, and we are finding ourselves yet still at war despite the accomplishments or the revelations of accomplishments over the last several decades and so i i, I you, you're absolutely right in your assessment you are uh boots on the ground uh, in your region uh that region uh, being in the south is representative of many southern and northern regions but suffice it is to say that we are we are at war with an image issue uh, on, on whether or not we as a people, particularly black men, are, are lazy. And so if I could just for a moment speak to the core of that issue, back to what you were saying, which is much credit is due to that statement. If you remove the ills, if you re, if you put the father back in the home and take away the benefits for women to have children without a father, if you if you restore what used to be our community, on the core of the question, black men are not lazy. But because we have an image problem, because we have a lopsided beneficial problem where we re reward laziness uh, for one species to pivot that species against another species, particularly the black male, uh, because we have these varying issues, as I said earlier, uh, hence we are yet creating generations of, and I want to say about two generations perhaps, uh, of, of young men who just don't see any benefit to working hard. They don't value the rewards of working hard. And sad to say, uh, they are even more left out in the cold, as Keenan always says, uh, without a dad. So, you know, Keenan, you're absolutely right. But like I said, if, if you were to take away all of the benefits that encourage poverty and all of the schemes and isms that divide a minority of people in general on the core, you will find that a black man will work. Coach, I, I love what you just said. And actually we can honestly end the show right there. Cause I think you summed it up in a nutshell, but you know, with that being said too, and I think you're absolutely right without the eels, without those, Without those distractions, without those those barriers that are put in place, I think you're absolutely right. Of course, if that's the case, then no, you know, the African American male is not lazy. But that's not the case. You know, we have to deal with this struggle. We have to, and, and you hit the nail on the head again when you said 
the value of working today in, in society, and it's not so much a, it's, you know, we are talking about African American males, but I'm actually starting to see this go across the board to, to mm-hmm. just, just that generational, you know, that, that, that younger crowd. It's that work, values, and this is something that Vita, you just said about your dad again. You know, and it's not, you know, we're not trying to make a point that, you know, it's just so great to have dad in the home, which it is. Mm-hmm. But the okay. point that we're trying to make more so than not is that when you look at what Miss Redding just said, her father worked and worked two jobs. I, I just told you a little bit about my dad. Coach, you always talk about how your father, when you have that father figure around who instills those values in you and shows you with that hard work and dedication, not taking anything away from any mom or any females who are working. But when you see that from both parents, mm-hmm. and when you see that and you're getting that from that, that male in the home who's like, okay, you know what? Dad went out. Dad supposedly is a breadwinner. Dad mm-hmm. worked his butt off. Dad brought the mm-hmm. bread home. Dad did this. Then you start to say, okay, you know what? There's mm-hmm. value in working hard. I, I see the benefits and you know, we'll see how my father put this, put this down and how he made this possible. Peter, um, I'm going to give you the last say before we go on, on uh, for our commercial, and then we'll come back. Well, you know, I'm thinking about it. You know, the whole thing, it kind of goes back to another show that you guys did about, um, you know, whose responsibility is it to raise the kids, right? Um, and it's does tie into, you know, do I think black men are lazy? No, I don't. But um, there's a lot around perception, like you know, what is laziness, right? Um, mm. Somebody, and, and, I, and I'm not trying to, you know, argue on in, in their favor or anything, any such thing, you know, stuff that's immoral is immoral. But, you know, you have people who will go out on the block, like you said, and guess what? they got administrative skill. Mm-hmm. I don't care what anybody says. They'll go out and they'll operate a whole business. They'll have people running money for them, mm-hmm. running dope, you know, mm-hmm. or, you know, right. Doing whatever the hustle, the hustle could be anything, making bootlegs or whatever, you know. And we use that as like the stereotype because you know, in the black community, and I'm saying in the impoverished black community because that's what the black community is bigger than the ghetto. They're <laughs> all over the place, and some are living good, some are not living so good. But we're everywhere in between, so we can't mm-hmm. say all black people are lazy because there's black doctors, there's black lawyers, there's you know a black president. My God, you know mm-hmm. we've come mm-hmm. pretty far. So if we say that we haven't come that far, we are in a, some form of deception for ourselves. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, we haven't come all the way where we want to be, you know, and there's still all sorts of um, things that have been embedded because of um, the history. I mean, it, it is real that, you know, you have a, a culture that was kidnapped, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. Vesper or whatever. You, you have a whole culture mm-hmm. that was kidnapped from where there were kings and queens because they were sold out by who? Mm-hmm. Not the white man, mm-hmm. but their own black brothers mm-hmm. and sisters. Mm-hmm. And then the African brothers and sisters, because African people a lot of times don't want to be called black as mm-hmm. an African American. Mm-hmm. But so they come over here, and now they're um, transcribed into a culture that's not their culture. They're being preached, you know, the gospel of the master, you know, which mm-hmm. is really just the tainted gospel of let me twist these scriptures so that they fit what we want it to fit. Mm-hmm. And now we got this, you know, whole, you know, religious thing around it and just all sorts of stuff where we've lost our identity as as people and then we split ourselves Mm -hmm. you know literally like between colors you know it's like there's Mm -hmm. so much going on here and it's like you know you get to this point where you know no we're not a lazy we're not a lazy culture Mm -hmm. you know these teams out here that want to be rappers and musicians and athletes and all sorts of stuff they're not lazy what it is is we have not tapped into the thing that makes them excited Mm -hmm. like the thing passionate inside of them like if it's making money if it's having more for my family um if it's doing something i love because really now we're not talking about color anymore we're talking about an actual cultural shift that has to take place because it's a generational gap we have this old the oldest generation literally the baby boomers they're going to be the oldest like living generation that's getting ready to like pass away (laughs) out of nursing homes and, and whatnot and this whole new generation black white hispanic i don't care what color they are coming in you know, to this place and time where, guess what? There is no such thing as working in a, in a factory for 30 years no more because mm-hmm. we don't even have factories all like that anymore because we, like, outsourced them or offshored them to India or wherever. Mm-hmm. So now the type of work is different. The type of way we can make money is different. And mm-hmm. thing that we should be valuing as a culture, in which we do value, um, you know, the, the white race and, you know, other people have caught on to it, is that creativity mm-hmm. is the new marketability. So if you have an idea mm-hmm. that you can take um, a seed into and grow it into something, like, a, you know, a Facebook or something that's, you know, technologically, like, what is the problem? 
and how can I fix it and how can I get that in the hands of the people? Instead of calling ourselves lazy, let's tap into the thing that makes people excited and put creativity around it so that they the box with their own ideas, run their, run our own businesses, everything. Make 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 a value because guess what? The entertainment world, and I don't want to say the white man's world because that's what you know, blacks and Hispanics and everybody else are part of that world too. Mm-hmm. But it's like there's a system being operated right now that's using the very thing that we care about and are passionate about, and they're making money off of our stuff. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like yeah. we're not lazy. <laughs> Let's talk well, about let's talk about that when we come back from the break. That's a very good point. We are we are working, but are we a greater question would be while we are working, are we yet being enslaved to a system that will make our work of none effect? Something to think about. You're listening to the Keenan Lake show right here on S I B N Radio. We'll be right back. Stand by. Of your lifestyle improvement station. Hi, it's Jamaica Chapel, College Park, Georgia, in the house. You're listening to SIBN Radio. Hi, this is Ted Bones calling from Richmond, Virginia, and you're listening to the Lifestyle Improvement Station, SIBN Radio. Y'all turn it up now. Hi, this is VJ Washington calling from Atlanta, Georgia. You're listening to the Lifestyle Improvement Station, SIBN Radio. So turn it up. Hi, my name is Sonia Claiborne from East St. Louis, Illinois, by way of Corruptsville, Missouri. You're listening to the Lifestyle Improvement Station. S-I-B-N Radio. Turn it up. What's good? It's your boy Joe coming from Snellville, Georgia. You're listening to the Lifestyle Improvement Station, S-I-B-N Radio. Y'all turn it up. You're listening to the sounds of your Lifestyle Improvement Station, changing the way we live. S-I-B-N FM. Powered by Southern USA TV. Responsible. Accountable. Who taught you that? My daddy taught me that. That's right, the new book, all the way from Asheville, North Carolina, representing the legacy of Benny Lake, is Keenan Lake. The author of My Daddy Taught Me That, the book and the program for young men in Asheville, North Carolina, and throughout the region. Tune in. Tune in to the program, the project, and the book at MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com. For more information, email Lake at MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com. Or call 828-582-2261. That's 828-582-2261. My daddy taught me that. Dot com. Ustedes están escuchando SIBN, transmitido por Salet USA TV. Síguenos en Twitter at Salet USA TV. O visítenos en www.415-96radio.com. Hey, thank you for joining us. We're right back here at Keenan Lake Show live and on demand on SIBN Radio. Don't forget to visit www.mydaddytaughtmethat.com for more information about the program for young boys, young men, as well as the paraphernalia, I hate to use that word, but the gear, I should say, that Keenan Lake is working on so that you will be able to say, my daddy taught me that. Keenan, great hot topic you're on fire again you always do this uh, i'm beginning to think that you might be an arsonist but you stick around and watch the fire burn <laughs> <laughs> well coach listen i gotta give a lot of credit to miss peter redding because she actually has me thinking so much right now that last her last her last comment and response to that was amazing and, and actually this and let me just say this too vita you were right on point with a lot of things you said and i see that with a lot of the young men that i work with today about the the fact is how do we motivate our youth and how do we get them motivated primarily when you're living in a world where everybody is geared towards xboxes and playstations and you have your cell phones and you have this and everything is going so fast so the things that motivated us will definitely not motivate them so i think you're absolutely right when you talk about the young generation not being lazy or the generation as a whole not being lazy or black men not being lazy it's about just finding different things to motive i think you hit some great points When you talked about the factories being moved, I think you had a lot of great points. With that being said, though, this is this is where I want to take it, Coach. And and since Vita talked last, I'll let you comment on this again. Do you guys find it lazy? And this is a question between you and Vita, Coach. Do you guys find it lazy where 
or when a young man will be motivated by his peer, okay? And this could be of any age. It could be of, you know, young 20s to early 30s or whatever age you want to use. But when you're motivated by the masses, and what I mean by that is this. The, the common thing now is, once again, you know, if, if I need some money, I can make fast money. I can get out here and hit the block, get me a package, do what I need to do. When you decide to give in to do that, instead of going for school and getting that degree or getting your education or... You know, and, and of course, I know there's a lot that plays into this, but even sacrificing, saying, okay, you know what, if I was out here in the streets, I could make $500 a day, $1,000 a day, as opposed to working a job at a Burger King or a McDonald's where I'm going to make, you know, two and $300 a week. So mm-hmm. my point is, are we lazy from that standpoint where we won't even try? Like, okay, you know what, I'm not even going to try to sacrifice and, get, and, and, and wait but they reap the wars later as opposed to getting a degree or working this job and, and doing what I need to do. Instead, I'm going to get that fast money and I'm going to get out here and do what I need to do. And, and that's what I mean by, and maybe lazy is not the word. Maybe it should be a different word that I'm using, but that's what I mean by lazy. Because it's like, we, it's, what I see now in a lot of our younger generation is that they're not even trying and they're settling. So maybe well, we can comment on that, Coach. I mean, but before, before, before you before you and I and, and our guests uh, launch on a, a white horse and ride off into the sunset, we must agree that the society and the culture has made it uh, easy and accessible for them to have the lifestyles that they live uh, without any consequences. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's sad to admit that. And so if I had not, if I had not had a father in my home, if I had grown up without a community as tight as our communities were back in those days, if I had the incentives that the young people had on today's situation, I cannot sit here in a self-righteous mindset and say of a certainty that I would not be any different. I mean, the, 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 the river that flows down South will flow down south unless some catastrophe happens to make the hill or the flow go north or east or west and certain storms will cause new inlets in this river to make new pathways for the river to have a new flow and so I would not sit here and say of a certainty that I would be where I am today had I not had the tools and so you know while we're eliminating part of the responsibility I know we shouldn't do that for these young men to, to, to aspire to something more uh, intricate, something more creative, or whatever the case may be. Let's define the word work. They are still yet working, but it is yet in a manner that is unacceptable to the American public. They are yet still working. They're conniving. They're, they're, they're cunning. They're, they're crafty. They're creative. They, they, are, they are all of the things that is required to survive in any kind of a work environment, perhaps lacking certain skills like dress code or perhaps learning certain uh, mannerisms that would help them be able to, as, as as one of our other guests said, code switch, but let's give them credit. They they are up against the wall and they are taking, yes, the easy way out because it has been given to them and this, again, is part of the mastermind. So, yes, partially lazy, but yet then again, they are still yet working because if you can tell five lies and keep up with them five lies to tell five more and then keep up with the 10 and tell five more, keep up with the 15 lies and tell 20, that's some thinking right there because I can't even do that. I tried it, <laughs> but I got caught by my father who was bigger and tougher and slicker than me. So, I mean, we, we got to, I think one of the things that I saw in the 80s, in the 80s, one of the things that I saw is the tide was turning for American workers, particularly American men workers. The tide was turning. Companies were downsizing. They were, as my sister said, they were going overseas trying to get the tax benefits of that. They were putting money in tax shelters that weren't taxed. They were doing everything they were big enough to do to make sure that their profits were fat and big to this day. They were being slick and all of these things. And what a lot of people don't realize is that we had a downfall long ago for those who even had the guts and the the stamina to work. They were fighting an uphill battle then. And so we, 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 as you said, Kenan, we got to step back, as my sister said, and take a look at this thing. And, and, and kids were on the block selling drugs. And listen, I worked in the trenches. And one of the things that I have to respect about kids, they will tell you how things are. And kids used to tell me, listen, this is how it is at my house. My mama's on crack, but she got a $50,000 job. 
I need some help right there. And my daddy is gone, but the, we in, we're in the suburbs, this, that, and the other. But the reason why I do this because I, I, I feel that nobody really cares. So, I mean, kids will adapt based on the environment. And, yes, they are lazy when it comes to our standards and when it comes to the standards of corporate America. But you got to have some you got to have some thought into having your pants, you know, hanging a, below your buttocks. I know it sounds stupid. Uh, and then, you know what I'm saying, putting your shoes where the shoestrings are backwards or your, whatever. There's thought going into a lot of things that our youth and our young men are doing. But what they don't realize is that you can't avoid the foundation of work. And that is the problem here that we could probably discuss in this show or another show is the very foundation by which we were raised is being re-poured. And we have not always done a great job to disseminate how the foundation is changing, yet keeping some principles in place. With that, I'll yield the floor. I feel like I'm in Congress somewhere arguing for. <laughs> All right. Coach. Okay. Okay, okay Vita. You can go ahead and weigh in. Um, well, uh, there's like so much stuff going through my mind. Um, you know, the one thing, you know, I, I almost forget what your question was. You know, do, do I, was it that I think, you know, that the teens are lazy? You know, what was the question? Well, again, what I said, stated was that the easy way out. Like, it seems like we oh, okay, okay. the easy way out. And instead of, and you're right. I think, gotcha. I think being able to go ahead, go for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, again, I think part, part of it. Some of it is cultural, you know, but part of it um, is the fact that we're in a generation where it's like everything is microwavable, you know, like you can get it quick and you can get it now. And, you know, the, the fact that um, really if we're talking about laziness, we're really talking about a character issue, you know, like work ethic, like what is that? That's not something tangible, but, you know, what is work ethic? You know, it, it, it's, it's a character thing, you know, to stick, stick to it, you know, um, to have to work through when things are, are tough, you know what I mean? And it's a totally different topic, but it's another thing. It's just like, you know, why why are we have uh, black marriages are, like, extinct? You know, like, you know, why are so many divorced? You people, we have a different sense of uh, family even now, you know. And just like on TV, you get these uh, shows that are, like, the new normal or, you know, modern family or, you know, whatever. And it's like the whole of our culture is recognizing that mom, dad, two-and-a-half kids, and a dog is not the uniform um thing anymore, you know, and I'm not saying it's right, wrong, and different. I believe, you know, obviously I'm a minister, so it's like, you know, the the husband, <laughs> the wife, and the kids, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like in that order, you know, but it's like at this point, you know, now we're, it's like a redefinition, you know, I, I can't say, you know, like I said, I can't say that the generation is lazy, I just have to say that we haven't tapped into the piece that, that, that they really uh, need, you know, in, in order for them to stay interested. You know, um, yeah, okay, so we'll diagnose all these kids. You know, pretty much everybody, every child out there now got ADD as their diagnosis. Mm -hmm. No, I was about to cuss you, Lord help me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Minister, but okay. if you want to come out sometimes, it's like, no, kids just need a good butt whooping sometimes. Mm -hmm. And because we don't correct our kids anymore, there's a, a part where you ain't paying attention because mom and dad are afraid to whoop you because you can call 976 kids on them. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. we're afraid of the kids, you know, and there's no discipline going on to, to make them to see that this is the way. And, and again, you know, we can't define, like, okay, uh, not being lazy equals this. It means you have a blue-collar job, working in some Fortune 5 stuffy company, you know, whatever. That's not the way for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, going to college, I've got, you know, nobody wants to hear this, but going to college isn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't want to go. Everybody's not going to have the right type of discipline for it. You know, if, if college ain't it, you know, guess what? The military ain't it for everybody. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes it's an entrepreneurial path or um, it might be a ministry path. It might be, uh, some, it might be a blue-collar path. There's nothing wrong, and, and that's, I think, where we're messing up. We have, like, these stigmas. Mm -hmm. Somebody said it earlier. I think it might have been coached, but somebody said it earlier. Like, we have these stigmas attached to um, different works. Like, really what it is is that our pride, mm -hmm. um, and I can't speak as a man because I've never been a man, obviously, but, like, you know, as a people, I'm saying, you know, there, there's always, like, these, these three aspects of, like, sin. And I'm not going to preach, but it's like, like there's this, you know, pride, and, you know, lust of the flesh, mm -hmm. lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Mm -hmm. And when you take the lust of the eyes and the flesh or whatever out of it, or, or you can keep it in there, whatever. You know, if I see something I want, I want to get it. If I, if it makes me feel good, I want to get it. Mm -hmm. And if I see somebody else with it, and I want that because it makes me feel better, we get all the keeping up with the Joneses and stuff like that, then my whole direction is towards that. Something wrong where, uh, and I'm, 
I guess speak uh, for myself as a woman and to the women, there's something wrong when a woman um, downs a man because he is not um, as ambitious as she would like him to be because there's things that she wants Mm -hmm. left of her eyes and her flesh and her pride of life. And it's like, it's not good enough that he works at, you know, Factory X or whatever or Mm -hmm. has to work, you know, midnight shift at Taco Bell or something, that's embarrassing. You know, like, you know, he's putting diapers on your baby bottom, but that's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I, I expected more from my life. Well, get off your butt and go get it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's part of, like, the Proverbs 31 piece. But here's, a, here, here's, here's what I want to interject, though. Listen, here's what I want to interject. The question was, are they taking the easy way out? My, my, I have a counter question to the question, and it's this. How else will they... How else will the ch- the the young men of today's vernacular? And, and, and it's a question that was going through my mind: is the young men in today's vernacular, right? They see their mothers going out to work. All right, I'm just saying I don't know what the stats is on that, but they see their mothers going out to work. And you would think now, you would think, because children imitate that that they see the mothers working hard to buy them the sneakers and all the stuff. That that you know I got to work hard, and and I still I give them credit. They they working hard as some. It may not be what we should think they should work hard at uh trying to be slick but the but the the question is about the easy way out and i just wonder i wonder how much of the frustration from the black minority community as a whole as a nation of african-american people have we transferred to our kids i mean it has been it has been an uphill battle you got 45 percent of black men that don't graduate from that that, that graduate from school so you got the 55 percent that don't graduate you got 22 percent of black men Males who have 40, I mean, so that leaves you a great significant number of young black males who don't go to four-year college. You got 69% of black children who can't read. I mean, so the, the, the frustrations that adults have transferred either through partying, clubbing, I'm just going to have sex without protection anyway. I don't care. And adults have given up. Kids can only mimic what adults transfer or display. Yeah. And so you're yeah, absolutely good. right. Go okay. ahead on the comment on that. My, my, my I, I wanna, can I ask a question with a question, though? Yes. Like, Go because, cause, I mean, the question that's coming to my mind now, okay, fine. So you have this generation of, you know, Let's just, let's just go all the way in that direction. We have this generation of lazy black boys, right? Mm. Which is not true, but we have this generation of lazy black boys. Well, guess what? <laughs> Again, it goes back to another radio topic that I had heard. So what is the problem with our generation of men? And I'm not talking about the teens. I'm not talking about the kids. I'm talking about the generation of men who have made it. No, no, I'm not talking about the the lazy ones. I'm Mm -hmm. talking about the ones who have made it. Why and where are they? And how come they're not picking up and and, and pulling up these young men and coming alongside them and teaching them? Because because now that they've made it, they don't feel like it's their responsibility anymore. You're you're exactly right, Vita. Listen, you're exactly right, Coach. And, 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 And let me just say this, too. Vita, you're exactly right about that. And what we find is this. You just said it. The ones who, who make it, the ones who are so-called not lazy or have good jobs, they first of all, they don't fuck like it's their responsibility. They're but the lazy ones, though. Is, yeah. But then, <laughs> right. but then what happens is, but then what happens is, I'm like, right. yeah, they don't, listen, they don't feel like it's their responsibility, but then it's like they separate themselves and like, I don't have time for that mess because I'm on another level. Right. And that, and you're absolutely right. It's like, and this, but this is the thing too. Let me just go back to this, okay? Let me just say this too, while I while I have the floor. What bothers me is this, folks, and what bothers me what what what's been on my mind is this. In Asheville, North Carolina, we have about five to six hoods. Okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we have about five to six uh, low income project houses, uh, housing projects here in Asheville. Mm-hmm. In any at any given time of the day, I can go to any one of them and I can see the typical standard young African-American male standing on the corner doing what he does. Mm-hmm. Now, once again, trust me, folks, I'm not I, I'm not condoning selling drugs. I, that's, I think that morally it's wrong. I think that, it, uh, however, I do understand that there's a system. Mm-hmm. And with that being said is this. Now, in out of the five uh, housing projects we have here at, at Ashland, this is just, this, you can even say this is across the country because I'm sure they're set up sort of the similar same way. Mm-hmm. There's usually one way in and one way out. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you if you take a look at your community and your project, if you live in the hood, there's usually one way in and one way out. Mm-hmm. At any given time, Coach and Vita, the the police department can go in and put a stop 
and put a stop to the, the type of drug selling that's going on. Mm-hmm. But they don't because it's a business. It's okay? a business. We understand that. Yeah. It's, yeah. I understand it's a business. I understand that they make money. I think it's make billions and billions of dollars are being made. Mm-hmm. However, our youth are being are being the ones who are being depicted as the the the, the devil, the the bad people, this lazy, uneducated, don't want to do anything, and it's like. And Vita, you made a point. You hit the nail right on the head. But the question is now, how we know it's a trap. I know it's a trap, and, and for the most part, this is not something new. It's been it's been going on for years. We know that the law enforcement can stop this if they really wanted to. There's no way you're telling me that you can't go into a housing development and put it in. So you you know who's doing it. You see it just like everybody else can see it. We don't but, have enough prison space for all that. Well, not even the prison space. Well, they're working on yeah, that I one. Mean, <laughs> they're not even the prison space, though. What I'm saying is it's not even the prison space because if you have, if you, even if you just have the, the, the officers present mm-hmm. and post them up, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So so the point I'm trying to make is, and you, I think you hit the nail on the head, but I think you actually answered the question is, where are, are, are the ones who are supposedly educated, good jobs, where are we at, and why are we not in, in, out here putting, putting, um, uh, because our time, I, our energy, be, our efforts, because it a because for the same reason we were brought here, as my sister said, kidnapped and brought here for the same reason that we sold our brothers and sisters, our queens and kings out in the motherland. Don't even get get me started on that right there. We have continued those behavior patterns in the Americas, and we have sold each other out. You know what? Yeah, frustration is one thing, as I was speaking about earlier, but when you know. You was deep in the hood, even with a mom and dad, even with uh, all the opportunities that you struggled to get and you made it and you don't reach back. That is lazy right there. That's the problem right there, Keenan. The problem on the surface is the unruly young man breaking in home, just doing just stuff. You just hold your head and you want to cry. But what really turns my skin and gets me going is when you know you got several degrees or when you know that you have a solid job and you out playing the field. I don't even want to get started on that. You out being a pimp and a player because now you are enjoying the fruits that you forgot that someone else along with you struggled for you to have. And you won't even reach back and say, you know what? I'm going to set up a scholarship fund. I'm going to make these uh, mothers feel accountable to me, and I'm going to be accountable to them. I'm going to visit the varying communities where I come from. If every man that came out of the hood today went into the hood where they graduated from, if you will, and said, I'm going to pour my time and energy and money into making a difference, don't you think we would have a better young man in today's world? I think so. I agree. We got to go to a commercial, man. Y'all, y'all hot off the cuff, man. Y'all, y'all arsonists, man. Y'all watching this fire burn, man. This is the hottest conversation yet, man. This is a shame. All right, we we got to take a small break. I just I just got to go. It's all I can say, you know. Before I just get really heated, <laughs> I'll be right back. Ken and Lake Show, S I B and Radio. That's how we do it. Sunshine, and we here in South Africa are tuned in to SIBN Radio at www.415-96radio.com. If you would like to know more about the SIBN television and radio network, complete a contact form at the website www.415-96radio.com. So let USA TV reaching the world. I need you to realize and accept that there is only one philosophy that I have embraced under the Coach's Corner's umbrella, and that is that we are the common denominator in every situation. So I can't blame them, they, her, and him. I am stepping up to the plate, and I realize it's all me. Not that it's all about me, but it's all about the legacy for those that come behind me to achieve a height of success that I can't even imagine. This is called
called the transgenerational shift of mindsets that we may propel ourselves into the generations that is to come and tell them, I won't leave you a mess that you have to clean up, but I'll leave you a principle-centered life that you can celebrate and catapult into more success. Join me on the Coach's Corner at www.415-96radio.com. That's www.415-96radio.com. And follow me on Twitter. That's the only way you can keep up with the coach. That's right. DCC is in the house on SIBN Radio. All right. We're back here. Oh, it's been hot. It's a shame. This topic that we're having is a shame. It's, it makes my heart want to do more, but I don't know. Keenan, I just, you always bring up these heavy subjects. Once we get off the air, we can't watch no football. We can't, we can't barbecue, play with the dog or cat. Sitting there trying to well, figure out. I mean, you know, <laughs> my, my whole agenda, Coach, is being able to try to make folks aware and, 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 and bring some, some light to the subject, Coach. But real quick, before we, I know we got about about 15 minutes left, Coach. What I want to do is, is try to find a, a solution to what we're talking about. Because this is the thing, and I'm going to let you and Vita, and actually in the order, I want Vita, you can go first, and then Coach, you can kind of start to finish it up. This is the thing we do know. We do know that our youth, and this is something that I've been dealing with for a while in my program and dealing with just youth in the area that I work in. Our youth are not grateful. They're not appreciative. They, 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 they have this mindset where they feel like they're owed something. Mm-hmm. So even though we talk about no positive male role models, once again, who can show these young men and give them that example of what hard work looks like, we do know that there are mothers out there working hard. But even with that said, these kids, and it's not just, not just we're not even sp- specifically talking about young men. We're talking about the, this young, younger generation as a whole. Mm-hmm. They, they feel like they're owed something. They feel like, well, yeah, my mom broke her neck to get me Jordans, but... So be, they, they don't understand, they don't understand the, the work ethic. They don't mm-hmm. understand the, the value mm-hmm. of a dollar. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, any topics on that? How do we get these young folks to start appreciating what they have? And then also understanding that just because you don't have a label, just because, you're, just because you're, you're, your shirt is not polo or your, your, jo- your shoes are Jordans, doesn't mean that you're less than. I mean, it's like our, our whole... You know, our whole basis is what what kind of tags you got, what, what's popping, what kind of tags you got popping, what's, what what kind of shoes you have on, and if and, and it's like our identity is found in that. So that's kind of a two part question, but Vita, I'm gonna let you go ahead on with that. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't beat them. No, I'm just <laughs> mm-hmm. don't don't listen to me. Whoever heard that? <laughs> no, oh, that's <laughs> it's like silly beat. Um, but it's like you know, part of part of the yeah, I, I mean the the thing about uh, not being appreciative uh, again that that's that's something that's learned. Um, I, I found this, you know, and I'm saying you know somebody who gives pro bono services, right? You know, I found that when stuff is just given to people, um, a lot of times they're not appreciative, mm-hmm. and it could be the most wonderful thing ever, you know, that that was done for them. But the thing is, because they didn't have any investment in it. Mm. Um, they didn't, they didn't have to work for it. They didn't have to learn anything. Um, they just were given it, you know. And part of, you know, what's going on in the country, and, you know, everybody was just, like, flipping out when um, they heard, like, you know, food stamps was about to be, you know, reduced or whatever. Well, we have a system of, you know, not everybody, because, look, I was in a season two where I needed some help, and, yes, I did let my tax dollars work for me <laughs> when I needed help. You know, so I received some stamps or whatever when I needed it, but it's like... Some people are in a, in a situation where they've been giving, given things for so long that it becomes the expectation. And for kids, you know, it's a totally different culture that we're living in now. You know, we used to have chores. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I know our parents' parents and their parents had chores. And, you know, they didn't talk back when they had to do these things. You know, they knew something about getting up and, and having to, to earn something. And work for you. Okay, you want some shoes. You got to do something to get some money to get those shoes. You're not just going to get just get those shoes, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's not that you know our, our parents didn't want us to have you know nice things or whatever, but when we wanted it that bad, we would work for it. And you know that's that's part of it. Um, you know, and one thing that keeps it kind of keeps coming coming to my mind is that 
there's a lot of um I think I think I think a disservice has been done for women in general because of like all of these different like social movements that have come along or whatever and you know, I'm not, you know, into feminism or anything like that. But I think the more independent um, we've we've become as women, and uh, we could we could argue, okay, we've had to be more independent and body work and things like that because there's you know the man around, you know, in the home and black families or whatever. But part of it is because we've become so independent that it's like it almost like xed out the man, almost to say like we don't mm-hmm. need you, and I, it's like men need to be honored. You know, they need to know that they're um, that they're that they're that they're the man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that they're needed and they're honored <clears> and. <throat> You know, what they do is valued, and, you know, when, when that stops, you know, for whatever reason, you know, could be on both sides something was wrong there, you know, but when, when that starts getting not respected and whatever, and the, and the men are nowhere around, now the young men, they're having to look, you know, at, like, as you said, Coach, you're having to look at the mother doing all this stuff on her own, and it's like, you know, as opposed to, you know, you don't want you don't want the son. I don't. I think there's something dysfunctional. I mean, you don't want the son to step in to where the dad should be. You mm-hmm, know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that should never that spot should never be taken. Like he shouldn't have to be my husband. You know what I'm saying? Like I shouldn't have to get my emotional um, um, needs met. You know what I'm saying by my son? You know what I mean? There's something wrong with that. So a lot of times it's like, guess what? I don't want to be in the house. <laughs> well, I want to be in the house where I got to be my mama's husband practically. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that they laying with her, but it's just like she she pulling from me, you know, and then I feel less than a man because I got to go and get money because I see her struggling. She can't afford to pay for the stuff I want. I don't, you know, I, I maybe ain't got good grades in school. You know, nobody's mm-hmm. mentoring me through or whatever. And so, you know, mm-hmm. all I can do is go on the block or whatever to, to make mm-hmm. some quick money. The, the McDonald's applications, you know, them packed. You know, they got everybody they need at McDonald's. I can go out here and make a quick buck, you know, and I'm going to ask my mom mm-hmm. for nothing. And that makes me feel like a man. I'm mm-hmm. doing it on mm-hmm. my own. Especially you know in his peers, well, especially with the, to come in. especially with the yeah, peers yeah, well, approving it, you know. No, I, I was saying especially with their peers approving that. Oh, that's manhood. You're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah. Finish your point. Right. There. Finish your point. There. That's good. That was good. Oh no, no, no. It's just you know. I just think that you know the the men from all over. Like I don't. Like I said, I don't think it's even relatable for a man who's a VP. You know, which is rare, but it's like you know the black man who's a successful doc or whoever to come in, swoop in, like, you know, Superman, and say, well, the, the little ghetto kids, you know what I'm saying? No, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. not real. Mm-hmm. You know, a man who came from the situation who, I'm, you know, look, let's, what if men who, mentor who are, people who work in manufacturing, in mm-hmm. the factory, the man who is working at Dollar General who's a manager, you know, the man who is, you know, doing a paper route, the man who mm-hmm. is a stockbroker, the man who is, like, it's more to success the man who's a good husband, who's been with his wife for 30 years. How about that man coming in and teaching the young men how to be husbands, not just men? Because mm-hmm. there's something powerful about that. That means that you a husband means that you're standing in your family. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. more, there's more to it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I totally understood. You're, you're absolutely right. That, that's amazing. And I think that you, you've made some val- very valid points. Wow. Mm. Something to think about what yeah. she was talking about, man. That was good. That was what good. It was. Yeah. So, Coach, I mean, listen, so this is what I want to tell the folks out there listening. I think, Vita, I think, again, thank you so much. I think you you made some very valid points. And like Vita said, if you have kids who are, you know, not listening to you or not valuing what you're telling them, beat them. That's exactly what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beat those kids. Don't you beat them kids bad. Don't beat them bad. <laughs> As a social worker, folks, listen. I don't encourage you to. I don't encourage you to beat your kids, but at the same time, I do encourage you to discipline your kids. Okay, right, and right. that's the thing. That's the thing that we have to get back to as well. The lack of discipline, or the 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 non discipline, is you know you can't you can't you can. People always say you can't be your child's friend. Well, no, that's not true. You can be your child's friend, but you definitely have to be their parent first. Right. Okay. You have to be their parent first. You have to be able to parent your children and not afraid to parent your children, mm-hmm. and then you can be their friend. But you're creating, post- you're creating a great storm. Let me just say this to those mothers out there that are struggling, because this is a serious struggle. You're creating a great storm if you give your child everything. I'm sorry. I mean, everything yeah. that the child wants, I don't care if the child wants the moon to come down and kiss the sun and the grass to come up thereafter, you got to find a way to earn it. And, and you got to yeah. make a stand, moms. You, you can do it. 
You got this show. You got books. You got you, we got mentors out there. I know they're not always touchable, reachable, and all that. But we have more resources and doing less with them today. We're doing more poorly as a people today with more resources than when we had less resources. We were stronger, and so we That's have true. to advocate, uh, 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 Keenan, that giving. Because here's the hidden myth. The hidden myth, the greatest myth about children and young men and young women is they want constructive criticism. They want guidance. They, I don't care if they're mouthing off gang members, uh, criminals, juvenile delinquents. Give them all the worst labels ever. But if you think that the human experience is not about wanting to be better and do better, then you yourself have to question yourself. These kids want someone to pull them in, to rein them in. And while they may be disseminating something different, deep down inside they will begin to hate, disrespect, dishonor any adult who just lavishes them with everything they want. Keenan? Exactly. You're actually right, Coach. And listen, folks, I want to say this too. Um, Vita actually hit a point on the head. We, we are, we're not expecting just because you're a doctor or you have a, you know, a PhD in this, or you're a lawyer, or whatever, you have a great job, and you're a professional, to save all of our youth. That's not what we're saying. But what we are saying is this, and what I'm saying is this, if you are a person of influence, you are a person who has made it to a degree, or you're just a person who has it on your heart to pull, to, to pull up and help, we need folks like you guys to reach out into these communities to have, if you're a positive person, a positive mo uh, role model, and sometimes it doesn't necessarily have to be a male. It could be a female. However, the struggle and the, the need, the call to need now are, uh, is males because we, we, we're we losing males rapidly. We need some folks to go back in these communities, lift up, pull up, and help. That's what we're looking for, folks. So if you're able to do that, I encourage you to do that. Um, again, I want to say thank you to my special guest, Mrs. Vita well, excuse me, Miss Vita Redding. And if you need some graphic design work, please get at me. I will let her know. She's a, she has great work. She does really good stuff. Um, and, Coach, I think we, we, we did it again. I think we had a lot of information. I think we had uh, put some stuff out for some of our listeners to, to think about, but also give some resources and some options to help as well. Listen, if you listen to this show, you feel like you're trapped in a snare. What do I mean by trapped in a snare? Pleasure-driven situations. You seem like you can't control yourself. Venereal diseases on the rise. Emotional dysfunction. Domestic violence, by all means. You're struggling with how to earn cash, how to stretch your dollar. Spiritual death. You're just frustrated with going to church. Family dysfunction. Everybody's got an attitude. Drama for your mama. Destructive behaviors coming from your kids. And vocational dysfunction. Because when you show up at work, they ain't acting right either. And they supposed to have it all together. Listen. Get on your knees, take a look at yourself, and restart. We can be better if we try, if we look inward. We can't always point the finger at someone else. And this show, my daddy taught me that you didn't have your father there, you didn't have your daddy there, but you have a heavenly father. I hate to go there, but let's go there because some of this stuff that we're talking about is beyond our solution uh, uh, resource pool. We need a spiritual encounter to reassess, to retool, to regroup. I want to encourage everybody out there that visit www. My daddy taught me that dot com. If you haven't gotten the book, get the book. Become self-educated. Once again, we used to be a people that taught ourselves to read. I need some help right there. We used to be in control of our own literacy. And this is that time that we can make the difference in our hood, wherever you may be. So I want to encourage you, visit www.mydaddytaughtmethat.com. Don't forget now to connect with Kenan Lake on Facebook. Kenan, give them the Twitter and the Facebook one more time. All right, I have three Facebook folks. The KL Show is one of my Facebooks, and that's on SIBN Radio. Uh, my Daddy Taught Me That, and then my personal is Kenan Lake. I'm also reachable on Twitter at The KL Show. And also, you can reach me at the website or through the website, www.mydaddytaughtmethat.com. And I really, really want to thank again my guest, Vita Redding, and I want to thank you, Coach, for another good show. Thank I enjoyed you for it. Having me too. It was fun. Yes, yes, yes. Keenan, you are off the chain. You are dangerous. You are dangerous to society in a good way. <laughs>
<laughs> hey man thank you so much for everybody that's joining us right here don't forget you can download these episodes so you can retool and re-listen to them share them with your boys your girls and uh, whatever you do let's hear your feedback on what you think fact or myth are black men lazy leave your response there on twitter or facebook this is the coach speaking for Keenan Lake the Keenan Lake show and our special guest until next time take care of yourself Thank you for joining us today for the Keenan Lake Show. We know you will be empowered as you consider the content shared by Mr. Keenan Lake, co-host Marcus Select, and our guests. For more information about Mr. Keenan Lake, please visit www.mydaddytaughtmethat and feel free to email us at lake at mydaddytaughtmethat.com. Books can be ordered from Mr. Lake by calling 828 582 2261. Until next time, you've been listening to the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio.